The Golden Mean, Chapter 23 of Al Fusul Al Ilmia Wal Usul Al Hikamia, translated Categories of Knowledge and Principles of Wisdom by Imam Al Haddad, a 17th century saint and jurist from Yemen. The Golden Mean. You should know that moderation and steering the middle course are required in all affairs and must be maintained. It has been handed down that the best of things are the middle ones. Also, moderation, deliberation and graceful manners are one of 25 parts of prophethood. The commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Abu Talib, May Allah enable his countenance and grant him his good pleasure, said, Keep to the middle course, for those who exceed it return to it, and those who fall short of it eventually advance to and rejoin it. It is out of incapacity or neglect that one falls short of the middle course and moderation, while to exceed it is to be immoderate and extravagant. Allah, blessed and exalted is He, urges mankind towards moderation and to cleaving to the middle way by categorizing these acts as the best of deeds and manners when He, the exalted, says, Make not your hand tight your neck or stretch it out to its utmost reach, such that you become blameworthy and destitute. Those who, when they spend, are not extravagant and not wasteful, but hold a just balance between those extremes. All praiseworthy attributes, manners, and good deeds should be judged according to this rule. To go into this in detail would be too, too lengthy, so we will give only a few examples. One of such is generosity, excess, in spending and immoderation here, it amounts to squandering and wastefulness, for Allah likes not the wasteful. By default, the derelaction and negligence by the scarcity and scarcity and stinginess and scrolls are removed from Allah the exalted and from men. Amongst the praiseworthy manners and appreciative deeds is being courteous. Courageous is being courageous, whilst when immoderate, it turns into recklessness and unnecessary risk-taking, whereas when insufficient, it becomes cowardice and great and disgrace. <coughs> also, humility is praiseworthy, but when excessive, it turns into degradation and humiliation, and when insufficient, it turns into arrogance and pre frivolity. The same applies to modesty which, when excessive, becomes effeminacy and weakness, and when insufficient, becomes rudeness and impudence. Finally, too much humour and cheerfulness leads to fatuousness and triviality, while too little leads to offensiveness and estrangement. Other, other traits can be weighed in the same manner. The same principle applies to sleep, food, clothes, and so on and so forth. One must always cleave to the middle way, for both extremes are blameworthy. Now be aware that the limits of moderation may not be evident, and the middle way may prove difficult to locate, except for those who have religious insight and are well versed in knowledge and certitude. Therefore, any person who experiences problems in this area must refer to such people, and if he cannot find any of them, which frequently occurs these days, he must halt and wait until he is sure of the right thing to do. The best course of action when confusion occurs is to lean slightly on the side of excess in praiseworthy things such as humility, 
and liberality and slightly on the side of frugality in habitual things such as eating, sleeping and talking. For it is in the nature of the lower soul to lean toward excess in habitual things and towards insufficiency, insufficiency and neglect in matters of religion. It is therefore wise and appropriate to go against the soul's inclination on both accounts, if Allah, the exalted, is willing. The proof of Islam, Imam al-Ghazali, may Allah have mercy on him, has given similar indication in his writing. To explain further, if a man giving charity is undecided as to whether he is being miserly or prodigal, let him go a little more towards the side of excess, for this is better than avarice. <coughs> the soul is inclined to like money and to dislike parting from it, so it must always stand accused of miserliness. If a man is undecided whether he has excessive or insufficient humility, let him move a little more towards being humble, for the same reason as stated above. If on the other hand, he cannot decide whether he is taking the right amount of food, sleep, or any other habitual things, let him move towards reduction and economy. For the soul again stands accused here, and any reduction in such things is unreservedly praiseworthy, so long as it does not affect one's mind or body adversely. Understand this thing, for they are important. You should then know, may Allah have mercy on you, that some people of virtue and Sufism have said to do things that one may think go beyond moderation and the limits of the middle way, being overzealous in their acts of worship, whereas they forsake their habitual things to such an extent as to diminish the energy that is humanly required. If they are people of beginnings or novices, this thing must be taken to indicate their resolution to discipline the soul, train it, refine its character, and reduce its law. This can be achieved satisfactorily only by means that may resemble immoderation and overstepping the limit. For the soul is like an unruly obstinate animal that can only be tamed and trained for riding and work by reducing its fodder and imposing hard tasks on it. When it loses its willfulness and becomes compliant, then it is led back to the middle way. This is the explanation of all that has been said about such people in the early carriers, and it is quite compatible with wisdom and correct management. If, on the other hand, there are those in the primes of spirituality, then these things are to be understood as the consequence of being overcome by spiritual states so that the secrets of their state and status indeed have been overwhelmed by lights and unveilings. The servant departs at this point from the exigencies of his humanity and becomes, in most respect, more like the noble angels. This state is not perpetual. It remains in existence at time and not at others. One should concede to such people their states, for such states are beyond their control and should be considered non-breaking, blessing or karama. An, an example of this is what has been related about Sheikh Saal ibn Abdullah, may Allah have mercy on him, who used to eat only once every 15 days and not at all during Ramadan. Another is that of Abu Ubaid al-Busri, may Allah have mercy on him, who during Ramadan entered his house and told his wife to bolt the door and leave a small opening through which she threw him a loaf of bread every night. At the end of the month, she unlocked the door only to find 30 loaves stacked in one corner. Others have been said to eat once a year, and our master, the cook, al muqaddam Muhammad ibn Ali bin Alawi, may Allah have mercy on him, 
and grants people to benefit from him remained four months near the end of his life with neither food nor drink. <laughs> On the last day of his life, they forced some food into him and when he felt it, he opened his eyes and said something to the effect, Have you had enough of me? After which he passed away into the good pleasure of Allah the Exalted. There are many similar recordings about both people on the start and those at the end of their path. Their explanation is as we have stated above. However, they can be understood in more ways than one, all of which are acceptable and to be conceded to them. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa allahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-alim al-azim. ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم